As a woodworker or DIYer, I know you're always looking for a good deal. And in this box, I've got 12 tools that are under $20 that I know you're gonna love. I'm Brad for Fix This, Build That. Let's find out what's in the box. And just for some fun, I've broken them out in some categories for us. We've got measuring and marking, finding and foraging, punching and spraying, cutting and stabbing, and I'll take what gets you weird looks for 500, Alex. So let's jump in and see what we got. To kick off the measuring and marking category, what better else than a tape measure? Now, you're probably familiar with regular tape measures, and I've got one here. This is a 25 foot tape measure, and it's got little fractions on it. It's great, it works well. And this is a 16 foot tape measure. Now, the problem with these is they're huge. Now, if you use a 33 foot tape measure, I don't know, something's wrong with you, I'm just, I'm just saying. Now the 16 foot variety is the one that I use most in the shop because it is nice and thick and sturdy, but when I'm on the go, the one that I like to use is the DeWalt a nine foot tape measure. This guy, look how small it is comparatively. Look, we've got a 25 foot tape measure and a nine foot tape measure. I don't wanna carry this into the store. I don't wanna put this in my pocket. This little nine foot jobby, it can fit right in your pocket. It's got a little clip on it and it's even got a magnet on the backside so you can stick it to your toolbox or whatever. I buy these by the, let's say by the dozen. I don't buy them by the dozen. They have a three pack of these that you can get for like 15 or 18 bucks. I got one of these in my truck. I've got one in the office and I've got one in the kitchen. So having a small little tape measure really comes in handy when you are on the run. Highly recommend to pick up one, three, seven, twelve of these bad boys and just put them all over so you won't misplace them. And to go along with the measuring, of course, is the marking. And what I typically use in the shop is just these little mechanical disposable pencils. This is a Bic. It's got a 0.7 millimeter lead, and it's just your standard mechanical pencil. But the little lead being so small, it has a tendency to break off. And also the mechanical pencils, it's always like they get that flat side on them, so there's not really a point necessarily, but uh, it's still a pretty fine line. Now on the other side, if you want to do heavy duty work, you can get squirrely, as it were. This one's from my buddy, John Malecki, and use a carpenter pencil. Now these are obviously a lot more heavy duty, but uh, they're kind of hard to sharpen and they leave a really wide mark. And so it's good for framing and things like that, but not for precision work. But if you want the best of both worlds, you can pick up one of these, the Pika Dry Mechanical Pencil. This guy is about 15 bucks and it is a mechanical pencil on steroids. The lead on this thing is super thick. I think it's 2.8 millimeters. And when I say I think it is, I mean, I just measured it with my calipers to make sure it was. The lead can go out really far so you can get a nice reach on that. But also it's really cool because as it dulls down, there's a sharpener built in to the end of the little cartridge here. And all you have to do is stick that in and twist it around and you have a super sharp tip on it. So you can get the same fine point as you get with the 0.7 millimeter lead, but it's gonna hold up, it's not gonna break on you. I should start using it more in the shop, but I find that I use it a lot when I'm outdoors and doing outdoor projects, uh, but this thing is really cool. And it's even got a little clip for your belt or your pocket that you can stick on and just quick draw and mark stuff. Because you never know when you gotta, you know, be on the draw to draw. <laughs> it brings a whole new meaning to quick draw. It's also got different colored refills available. So these are some white lead refills, and this is perfect for marking on dark woods like walnut. So really dig this pencil, and that wraps up the measuring and marking category. Let's move on to the finding and foraging. In our projects, we use a lot of fasteners, maybe something like this quarter 20 nut and bolt, and sometimes, Mistakes were made and you drop things in places where you can't necessarily get them. Now, of course, I could reach under my bench, but I don't have to with a telescoping magnetic tool. Now, these little guys are, you know, seven or eight bucks and you can get some with LEDs that might be 10 or 12. But this little guy has saved my bacon so many times, mainly when I'm trying to get things from under a cabinet. It's got a little magnet on the end, which is very strong. And you can use that to fish out little items that you may have dropped. Look at that, huh? <laughs> so if you're a little bit of a Butterfingers like me, then you definitely need to get one of these to forage for all those parts that you drop on the floor. Now the next tool is the little brother or maybe the annoying cousin to the telescoping magnetic tool. And that is what I affectionately call the claw. You didn't think I could fit that in there, did you? No, because it is flexible. This guy is, I don't know, it's 24 inches long. And the cool thing is, is it's got a trigger down here on the end. And this is great for grabbing things that aren't magnetic. So I can just push this at the end and these little claws come out and can grab it. So let's say I dropped this little bubble level, which is plastic. I can reach down in there and pick it up 
and grab it with the little claw pieces. This thing works really well and I have used it so many times. So much so actually that I have broken the little piece off. I actually need to get a new one, but I JB welded it back on. But I use this thing all the time in this corner because I will drop stuff down here and it's kind of hard to reach. But when you have the claw, you can reach things that are out there. There's some trash I should have picked up a long ago. Let's see if we can grab it. And what is this? <laughs> uh, so this was not staged. I just fished out ant killer that I had dropped off the top there and I probably couldn't reach it. And so I just left it alone. <laughs> but using this little claw, you can reach down and grab things that are out of reach and you can bend around corners and things. I've even pulled out little scraps out of my miter saw dust collection, stuck this up in there, grabbed the little cutoffs and pulled them out. So highly recommend one of these. Again, this is in the 10 to $15 range, depending upon what types of things you have on it. I've actually seen these that have magnets on them as well. So you can even combo of those last two tools that I showed you and I drop things all the time so I use it all the time. All right, now let's move on to punching and spraying. And inevitably, if you are using an air nailer, and this is a cordless variety, <laughs> this is clearly not under $20, but it's a nice tool. If you're brad nailing things, you're gonna have a nail that doesn't quite drive down to the surface. I showed that in my six nail gun mistakes video, and if you haven't seen that, you can check that out right up here. But if you have a nail standing proud, then you're gonna need a nail set. What I have typically done in the past is get a little nail set and a hammer and just whack away and try to drive it in there, which is fine and dandy but you know you need a hammer and you need a nail set of different sizes but one year for Christmas my dad got me tool number five which is this springy punchy nail set thing this is awesome it is double-sided so uh, I don't know what the sizes are here I think that might be 1 32nd on this side and then a 16th on that side or a 16th and an eighth but basically this has uh, two nail sets that are connected with a spring and as you pull them out then they smack against each other so if I wanted to set a nail I can just have that in there hold it down with one finger pull it up with the other smack it down and it drives it in. So I don't need a hammer. I can do it a few times if it needs to be done. Sticks right in MDF, which is a nice little feature. And this is also great for taking the pins out of door hinges. So you can just put that little bad boy right on the underside of the pin, smack it up there and it will shoot that pin out. Be ready to catch it because it might come flying out. It's about 15 bucks and it comes in different sizes. So you can check it out and it is nice and compact to store away. And it is great for working on the job site. Now, drilling is part of a lot of different woodworking and DIY projects, and you might be doing it in wood or metal, but either way, uh, you want to make sure that you have a good starting point. So if I have a drill pit, you know, drilling into wood, pretty easy, and it's pretty easy to hit the mark. But when you are trying to drill into metal, that bit wants to just run all over the place when you push down the trigger. So the next one is gonna save you and that is the automatic center punch. Now this guy is about 10 or 13 bucks, again, depending upon which one you buy. But this is a punch that will make a dent in the metal and you don't have to use a hammer, it is automatic. So I can just mark where I wanna have my hole. This is dead. Little trick to get the ink back into the pin. Spin it around, just like this. If you do it too much, ink will fly everywhere. There we go. So you mark where you want your hole, then just take your center punch and you can mark it right there. And now when I use the drill, it is gonna go right in that hole and stay there. So this is great. I've used this on several projects and I would not want to try to drill metal without having a center punch, but it also works well on wood. If you just wanna make sure that you're getting right in that center spot, you can use this little bad boy and it'll do you right. Now loosely related to the punching is spraying because whenever I'm working with metal, I am typically spray painting it and I will use a filler primer and then go to a flat black enamel, which I think is a great look as well as a top coat. But if you've ever spray painted something where you need two or three cans to get it done, you know that holding down your finger on that trigger gets really annoying after you get into that second and third can and you're switching hands to get it. Or I don't know, maybe it's just me because I'm a wimp. But if you use tool number seven, you can spray paint in the lap of luxury. And this is a spray trigger handle. This thing is awesome. They make some cheaper ones. Don't get those. Get this guy. It's still only, I think, about seven bucks. And this just goes right around the top of it. And this will work. It says Rust-Oleum, but this will work on almost any spray paint can. And when you pull down the trigger, it sprays the can. So you have a lot better control with it, as well as it's got a two finger trigger, which you can pull back instead of having to squeeze your finger down, which again, just becomes a pain in the finger, I guess, after you do it for too long. I love this little handle. Great little thing. If you do any level of spray painting, definitely pick one up. All right, our next category is cutting and stabbing. 
And clearly I was watching a little bit of Peaky Blinders when I came up with that category. But uh, typically in my shop, I will use some box cutters, utility knives, and I use them a lot. I actually love using just a razor blade on its own. I mean, it, it works really well, especially if you're scraping something or if you just kind of want to carve around and just have it a little closer to the hand feel when you're really cutting something up. But uh, I do use a box cutter and these are great. I like this one because it's got a little storage capacity in here where you can store some other blades and so you can get a fresh one easily. But the problem with both of these is that you can't really cut super deep if you need to. And uh, sometimes you just slide out of a cut if you're cutting cardboard or whatever it is. So to solve that, I'm gonna use tool number eight down here, which is a snap off utility knife. Now these things, you can get them in uh, multiple packs. I like this little Stanley model. I think the new one is the Fat Max, but you can get it for, I think 12 or 13 bucks. And I will have links below to all these things down here. And also we're about halfway through. If I've missed a tool that you think is really awesome that's under 20 bucks, let us know down below in the comments. I'll go down there and read them and heart some of those ones that I think are really awesome. And if I buy it, I'll let you know. I really like this style utility knife because it has a huge blade on it. Now the draw on this is that it's got the little segmented pieces so you can snap it off and have a new clean tip there at the end. But honestly, what I really like it for is just the length of the blade. I mean, look at that bad boy. What, you've got three, three and a half inches of cutting power there. And this is great if you're cutting through things that are pretty soft, like cardboard. Uh, you know, you don't want it to be fully extended. Be safe while you're cutting things. Uh, but this is nice to have that extra length in it when you're trying to cut through some foam insulation, things like that. I just really like it because it's got the extra extension on it. And so it's better than a box cut cutter, in my opinion, for certain things. Go check these out, link down below. Now this next one is probably my favorite and it's really just because of nostalgic purposes. Now I've got some tools in front of me here and these used to be my granddad's. My granddad lived down in Florida. I was actually up in Cincinnati at the time in 2004 when he passed away. I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him. He didn't get to teach me a lot of things on woodworking, but whenever I was down there, he would show me some things and I always saw his shop. And when he passed away, my grandmother gave me some of the tools that he had and they are super special to me. So I've got an old combination square that was his, which is awesome. An old Stanley block plane, which has the side knocked off, which just gives it some great character. And this screwdriver, which is a complete tank. This thing is amazing. I love this screwdriver and I will never clean it up because I love the patina on it. But the other thing that I got from him was this vintage ice pick. So an ice pick is something you might not think of in the shop, but it is really great tool and definitely less than $20. So you can pick these up online. Some of them have wooden handles. Some of them are aluminum, uh, brass. Uh, Jimmy Dresta has got a really cool one that you could pick up from him. But an ice pick, you will not believe how many times you use it. And I love this one. This is actually a vintage Coca-Cola ice pick. And I use this guy all the time, either holding things down or prying out little loose parts that I've cut out. Or one of the things I use it a lot for is stabbing into the drywall to make sure that there's a stud in that location. So I like to use the magnet trick to find the screws in the drywall and that usually tells you where the studs are. But sometimes the people installing the drywall miss the studs. So I use this to confirm it. I'll just drive it straight in through the drywall and if it hits a wooden stud then I can feel that. But if it doesn't then I'll just scooch over a little bit. And if I do miss a stud then I can fill that in with a little spackle and it's no big deal. I would say go find one at a garage sale. You could probably find one for a quarter or 50 cents. Look at that bin of tools that they got sitting over there and just pick that out and maybe you'll find some cool screwdrivers or whatever too. But definitely get a vintage ice pick if you can find one. Now the next one is gonna be some hardcore woodworking cutting. So this is like legit, no ice picks or utility knives. Now I have this Japanese style saw and this is actually a Vaughn bear saw and I really like this. This one's really nice. It's got fine teeth on one side and ripping teeth on the other and it's nice and flexible and it makes a fun noise when you hit it on things. But sometimes it is a bit too unwieldy. It's really large and it's great for cutting large things. But if I just need to get in something tight or if I need to flush cut something, this is probably not the tool for the job and it's not under 20 bucks. Although I'll link down below to it because it is a nice tool. So for those times, I am gonna use a small flush cut saw. And it is basically the same thing as this with just the fine teeth. And it is flexible, so you can put it down and really get a flush trim on something. This is great for cutting dowels flush, uh, or if you're just gonna be cross cutting something and you wanna do it really quickly. I'll use this a lot when I'm edge banding something with solid wood, and I just wanna quickly get that off, and maybe I don't wanna grab the big saw. So having a little flush trim saw is really nice, and it comes in handy for a lot of small jobs. 
problems. But if you do want something like a Japanese saw or maybe a dovetail saw or something else like that, you can pick one of those up at today's sponsor, Woodcraft. Now, Woodcraft is a woodworking store that has all kinds of tools and supplies and basically everything that you need for your woodworking projects. You can go check them out at woodcraft.com. I'll have links down below to some items that you can pick up there and to their website. Go check it out. They have tons of stuff for under 20 bucks and they have even more stuff <laughs> for not under $20. They have table saws, band saws, everything you can think of. Go check them out. They are a great sponsor of the channel and thank you Woodcraft for sponsoring today's video. All right, we're coming into the last category, which is things that might get you a weird look when somebody comes to your shop or if you go buy them in person. So maybe just shop online for these. But now some of the things that I always do in the shop is mix things. And I've got like these little stir sticks and these are just like paint stirs and you could even have a larger size one and Dixie cups. These are both great items to have in the shop because if I'm mixing up little portions of things and I want to do it, but you know, this paint sticks kind of big and like you don't want to just be burning through a bunch of these because you know, it's like nice. It's like a big chunky thing. So instead of that, what I like to use is the Senior Tongue Depressors by Dynamex. <laughs> These are awesome. And basically it's a six inch popsicle stick. Now, quite frankly, I have no idea what a senior tongue depressor is. I guess uh, it's graduated from a junior tongue depressor. You know, maybe it's a tongue depressor that's uh, getting ready to go to college and they're just still not sure what they're gonna do with their life. So little six inch senior tongue depressors. These are awesome because it fits nicely in a little Dixie cup. And what I really like to do is snap them in half because I am a thrifty woodworker. And if I am mixing up pigments or epoxy, I'll just use half. I'll get the pigment with one side and then mix with the other one. And these are great. They come in packs of 500. Uh, I think this version right here is about 16 or 17 bucks, but I've seen them as cheap as maybe 13 bucks for 500. I would highly recommend grabbing these. And I don't know, maybe if you need to depress some seniors tongues as well, then you could also use these. We're bringing it home for the last tool. We're just gonna stay here. I'm not switching camera angles. The last one, uh, this really also has has to do with mixing and things that you're doing in the shop with liquids. Now, I don't use stain a lot, but sometimes I need to mix things. So I've got some Rubio Monaco here, which is an awesome product. And I had some charcoal and I had some chocolate and I had some uh, Havana Unana. And when I was trying to build the nightstand with the hidden drawer, the plywood I was using was kind of washed out and I wanted to darken it up. But when you're using the Rubio Monaco, it's like a thousand dollars an ounce. So you want to make sure that you're mixing it properly. And I don't want to use a big jug or anything like that. So instead, Instead, what I did was grab some syringes. That's right, these are blunt tip syringes, but do not get like the medical grade, you know, needle tip, like, you know, they might just give you weird looks, but they come in all kinds of different sizes and they have also different tip sizes at the end. And these just screw right on. And so what I did when I was mixing together my pigments is I could get really accurate, so I could pull in and get, you know, one and a half millimeters of the Havana, milliliters? not millimeters, and then maybe three milliliters of the chocolate and mix it together. And then that way, when I was doing my testing, I could figure it all out and then scale it up if I needed to. So there's a few different tip sizes, and I think these come in gauge sizing, but if you go out there, there's like a ton of different options, and they're really inexpensive. I think this whole kit right here was maybe 12 bucks. The other thing that I've used these for is for epoxy, so I'll grab like the largest one, because epoxy is pretty viscous, so you want a large opening, and uh, I would just suck in some epoxy there and then put it into some little fine details. If I had some engravings or small things, or if you just wanted to be really precise while you're filling knots in your project, you could use these. It works really well. And you know, you might get some weird looks when uh, your friends come over and see syringes in your shop, but you know, just let them know what's up. You've got a habit and it's epoxy. So whatever. I'll be checking the comments below for your recommendations, but if you want to see some other videos, I got them queued up for you right there. I want to give a big thank you to those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.